Hi Henry, um, I'm just going to try and do a video. I'll do it as quickly as I can so we don't end up with a big file size. There's This is Photoshop CS4. I don't know if you've got any software or um, or not. This is fairly expensive but you can get Photoshop Elements which is around about $80, eighty pounds, something like that. Um, and it's it's very very good. It's got most of the things this can do, but it's in a lot easier to use um, format. If you if you can't afford that, there's a, a free software uh, download called GIMP. Um, just check on the web and you'll find that for free. I haven't used it, so I don't know what it's like, but a lot of people say it's okay. Sorry about the circles keep going on and off there. Um, I've just got it so that you'll be able to see my mouse. Unfortunately, I can't switch off at the moment. OK, I've opened your edit, your photograph. The first thing you do is down here on, in the boxes, you have something called layers. And this, this one is your background or the original photograph. Never, ever work on that because you will destroy your file at, at some point. Every time you edit a photo, a JPEG that is, um, it does compress it more and gradually it deteriorates. So never ever work on your original photo. Um, open it up in your software, your editing program, and always make another layer. So you just click on there and drag down to that box, although it will look a bit different in Elements and GIMP. And there you've got a duplicate layer. Um, another way to do it, I'm just going to get rid of that, so I'll just bin the blue box highlighted. The other way to do it is to go to Layer and Duplicate Layer. It always asks you for a name, I never bother. But if you're doing a, a lot of editing, it's worth putting a name in. Okay, so now we've got two copies, and we're not going to work on the original, we're working on a copy. And you can imagine if you've got your photograph um, and you put a transparent layer on it, you can do whatever you want on that, it's not affecting the photograph. When you're happy with everything, you um, you put the layers together and flatten it and then you can't change it. So in that case, don't save, don't go to save, go to save as and give it a, another file name or number two or whatever because then you will still always have your original photograph. Okay, let's get going. We're going to use a tool called the clone stamp over here. If you click on it, the clone stamp tool. Right. Now you should always check that your opacity is um, 100% and the flow is 100%. There are times when you need to change that but not for this kind of thing. Aligned, it's hard to describe that but if I use the brush here and copy it, oh, it's telling me it's because I should have clicked. Alt, now I use a Mac, you could be different. See the crosshairs there? That means it's going to copy that part of your photo. So you click it and it's copied it. Now if it's aligned I'm just going to do this any old how. Oh, it's way too small, the brush you can see. It's only 10 pixels, so we move it right up and do it again. Now, if you, towards the outside of my circle, you see the crosshairs thing. That means that that's showing you where it's copying it from, and it will always stay in line with it. So even if I go over here, it's relative to the position you chose. If you take or take the tick out of aligned, then supposing I want to use this part again, alt click for the crosshairs to copy. I can do this over here, I can go over there, but if you look at the little cross you can see it's always staying in the same place. So generally to keep things matching where you're doing, keep aligned ticked. Okay, I'm going to get rid of those smudges I've made and just go back to duplicate layer. This is your history palette. So you can just go back and it puts it back to how it was at a certain point that you want it. Right, so let's start cloning it. That circle uh, I could do with being a little bit bigger, so I'm going to make it a few more cells. Just keep checking on here, that's about right. Now you want to keep the area you're going to copy from as close to the area you're going to disguise, because then you will have matching tones and colours, especially with skies. So I've made the brush that size. I'm going to get as near to the tower as I can. But I don't want to touch the tower else I'll end up copying that. And I Alt, there's the crosshairs. I'm choosing that part to copy. 
and then just start going in straight lines across there. And as you can see, the cross is following me down the page or down the photo, and we're getting matching. Now, what you have to be careful of uh, with skies, with anything really, you don't want repeating patterns like you've got these three blobs of cloud here. So what you can do is then choose another part and you can actually um, lower the um, opacity so you'll make such an evident mark and just do a few more strokes just to hide them. Just so that now what's happened here is I've got part of the edge of the photo. Don't want that. I'm copy from up there and just hide that. needs to be a hundred percent just to get rid of that line okay so that's your photo with that area cloned in and that looks okay but what I did with yours and what you can do when you've got nice straight lines like this make another layer oh just let me show you something first there's your original photograph and there's one we've been working on so if we turn the eye the viewing thing off you see the thing is still there. Gone. So if you did that, you're back to your original photograph. You haven't touched it. You've done it on this transparency above it. Okay. Now we're fairly happy with that. Not perfect, but we're fairly happy. Um, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to make another layer to try the next thing on. Every time you change what you're going to do, add another layer and you can flatten it all at the end. That means that if you do something you don't like or it doesn't work out, doesn't look good, you can just delete that by going to the bin and deleting it. If I didn't like this one, I go to bin and there I am with the original photograph, but I'm going to restore that because it's okay. But it does look a bit patchy. So I'm going to choose this tool here. The If you click on it, you can get the quick selection tool or the magic wand. The magic wand will um, you'll click on a colour in it and it will find all the colours the same. If you choose contiguous it means they've got to be touching each other, they've got to be continuous. If you untick that it will choose every one of those colours in your image. We're not going to use that. We're going to use the quick selection tool and you make sure it's on plus and then you just start dragging and it's really clever this tool. I'm going to go up to the edge of the building and it detects it. It takes a few seconds for it to put it in the memory. Now we want a bit more of it over here. Okay, and also that gap there. Just make sure you check all the areas that you want to um, work on and don't forget little gaps. But what it has done, let me blow it up. This is the magnifying glass. I'm going to magnify that area. It's, can you see the marching ants, the dotted line? It's only done really the purple of the building and not the lights. So I'm now going to go back to the um, quick selection tool and I'm going to click on that minus. So I'm going to take, I'm going to click here and it will take that part off. No, it won't. It's because I've not clicked on minus. Minus. Now it's going to take that away from the selection. I'm just going to go around the lights like that and add the little the yellow bit to the rest of the photo. What you have got also here is um, this spike thing but we want to make that a little bit smaller because it's only a tiny little thing if you see the photo at real. I'm just going to try and choose that as well. Oh, remove it from the selection of the sky. Okay. So now, if you look around, that marching line is matching all your building. There are things you can do to make sure it fits good, like select, modify. You can contract it by however many pixels you want. I think we'll expand it actually to. No, we'll just leave it where it is. It's a fairly good selection. Um, but yeah, you can make the dotted line go further away from the building or closer. And with a lot of things, you have to choose select 
modify and feather and that means that the blending will be more gradual it won't be so evident but with this fairly straightforward um, image I'm quite happy to do it as it is okay right except I've done that on my background layer and I wanted a new one that's okay you can still do it and as long as that's blue that's the one we're working on we're working on the new one let's zoom back out to so zoom back to fill your screen double click on the hand or it will show the image in full size I'm just going to spread it out okay now here's another great tool to try and reduce this this area here I'm going to use the gradient tool there now it's still it's still on the same colors <coughs> excuse me as I used last night the gradient you want is from a color to clear these are like solid so it'll go from purple to white or black to white or red to green whatever this is purple to clear in other words it has no effect and that's what it's already set on now to get the colors that you want for the gradient click on the first box and it will bring up the colour that it is which is your colour there but just to check if you actually click on the colour it brings up your colour picker and just to be sure I'm going to show you what I do you could try and find the colour there but to be exact go to your own image and press alt and click it turns to an eyedropper and it samples the colour okay and then put ok for that one down here it goes a bit more pink so I've put um, less than, about a three quarters purple and then going to pink because it's about three quarters of the sky you see we've got pink and just to be sure let's move that out of the way I'm going to click on your pink so we get the exact colour and that's what it's got and then finally it's just blank what that does is it will put the purple at the top the pink about Oh, uh, below halfway down and the last part will be clear so it won't make any effect at all ok so now we've got our colours in the gradient now I've got to turn that one off first I'm not used to doing these videos ok so now we've got the gradient tool and you can see there the colours we've got purple to pink which is very faint to clear <coughs> so just go on your image and click and if you want to do a straight line down if you press shift at the same time you get an exact straight line and I'm going more or less to the bottom because it's going clear anyway right now the timer's on now it's done it and what it's done is smoothed out the sky for you it's still fairly pale here you could have actually I'll give it another go let's make another layer to do that you could have said we'll have it pink all the way to the bottom Okay, and that might take a bit of the white out, which will help. I'm not using the shift key there, so it's just going anywhere, but that's okay. Timer's on. That's better. It's it's less white. It's more on the pinky purple side, but you've got less pink. Looks all right to me. Um, when you're doing skies, you can always reduce the opacity. That means that the the gradient you've put on, you can make it less visible, like that. So you're only getting 46% of it, or none, that means the, you've taken it away. That's where you're only giving part of the effect. Okay, I think it looks better with that bit of pink down there, so I'm going to leave that 100%. Okay, right, now let's zoom in. Um, well, first of all, we get rid of the marching ant, select, deselect. And we're going to zoom in to the tower part, the very top, the spike. And just check that there's no ugly joining up lines. No, nope, that's all looking pretty good. Always examine your um, images at full size. So view actual pixels. Because then if there are any ugly bits or missed out bits you can correct them I'll write down just check over there
Okay, now that's pretty good. Let's go back so we can see the whole thing on the screen. Now you've got these, how many layers? One, two, three, four, five. We just want one layer. We're happy with it, so now we will say layer, flatten image. And you'll see here, we've now only got one. Looks a little bit dull to me, so I'm going to make another layer. I tend to keep my number of layers low because the file size gets bigger and bigger and it starts going slower. I've not got that much RAM. I've got um, I've got a filter that would do this better, but I'm going to show you the one that comes with Photoshop. Image, adjustments, curves. This is one of my favourite ones. This is the black end of the colour spectrum. This is the white end. And this histogram shows you, it shows it's a lot of darks and nothing at this end. So first of all, I could move that up to where the histogram starts, which means that the whites will be almost completely white. You don't want them totally white because that's called blown. And then it's a bit dark here, so I'm going to brighten by lifting, cur lifting the curve upwards. I'm going to brighten the building a bit to make it more contrasty. Let's try lowering that. That's kind of put the focus on the lower part. I'm not so sure that works. There are some custom grades. You can do um, lighter, just lighter the whole thing. That's just made a slight curve. Uh, medium contrast. Now that's too dark. Strong contrast would be very dark. Don't like any of those. So we just put it back to the default. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to keep that a bit dark at the bottom and then raise the mid tones. Okay. Now comparing the orig or oh, the one we've worked on, add the curves layer, and you see it gives it a lot more room. Just brightens it. So now we're happy with that. Layer flatten and now we'll save the image. Oh, it's still doing it, still got the timer. Let's see what size it is? It's, uh, well, it's 34 megabytes at the moment, that's why. Okay, file. Don't save because then you'll be covering up your original photograph and losing the original. So save as. Now that's the file na number or name that you sent me. That's your original. We don't want to change that. We want to, sorry, we don't want to save that. We want to keep your original. So I'm going to call that dash and two. That's like you second edit and save it wherever you want to save it. I'll save it on the desktop. No, I've already used two for the one I did for you, so I'll change that to three. Three. Save. Come up with this box. Again, it's taking its time. Always save the best quality, the maximum quality, which in Photoshop is 12. So you've got this right over here. That will tell you the final file size which is 5 megabytes. OK. And that's it. I hope I'm not too garbled and umming and Bye.